Hello everybody! Um, so recently I made a variety show of a lot of comedic sketches that um bit out there I might say. So I'm just gonna do a kind of director's commentary and uh, watch along if you will. I did one yesterday with Kitty but um, I didn't get across any of the points, it was really rushed. So it's just gonna be me and I'm gonna do it on my own and we're gonna, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, So straight out the gate, I had all these sketches made and I just didn't know how to merge them together really and um, I guess it's kind of like in uh, Rick and Morty when they have that television set that um, just has infinite channels for every station in the universe. I guess that was kind of a little bit of inspiration there. Taking one person's idea is plagiarism and taking lots of people's ideas is research. That'll never get me. So the Lulu's Variety Show, for YouTube you're supposed to say the title of the video at the start. So that was that. The stories you are about to hear are true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. That was, I was trying to be clever, have that at the start because all the stories in the show are actually stories that I've picked up along the way and heard from friends um, so that was that kind of a disclaimer that these are all true stories I've just changed the names to protect the innocent I don't know if you can call them innocent uh, that came out I was pretty happy with that the split screen I'm actually playing both parts right there I know right the power of filmmaking This is one of the oldest sketches I had. I just remember when I was a kid that all the uh, ads seemed to be from Europe and they were badly dubbed and they're all like Aryan race, blonde hair, blue eyes, amazingly white teeth. If we dubbed it wrong or if the compliment didn't really seem to be a compliment, their ads would always have like a little bit of a story arc, like it'd be two girls in the gym shower locker room or something and one be like oh my god you, your skin looks amazing and then she'd be like yeah this is what i use and then the other one would use it and she'd get the job so i just thought if we could then they have an arm wrestle and they beat her in an arm wrestle but then just keep going the next step and that was actually maggie i only realized when it came to the final stages of editing that was maggie so this news segment uh, this is one of the sketches where just have like a couple of jokes stacked on top of each other like straight out the gate me just looking like that is a bit um bit arresting image amazing amazing mustache then news being fascist propaganda um the joke the audible joke counterfeit butt plugs how are they getting them into the country and that image of the third tunnels was when Kitty tried to make a uh, vegan Nutella. And now, well, due to technical difficulties, our weather software isn't working, so we're going to play this tape from 1974 of a similar weather forecast to today. Oh yeah, and the 30th of February. In case nobody got that one. I've always been curious about that saying, like I think it's the way that I interpret things as well. It's a little different, take things very literally. And I thought, I feel naked without my glasses on. So then the payoff is obviously that it's not his glasses he's missing, he's actually just naked. And that was a murder to film on account of that window there faces the main road. And at one stage, I think a funeral went past and they had to hurriedly put me, uh, me clothes on. Lucky everyone was away that. 
I have this, I have this one turn though. Makes absolutely no sense at all. This was probably my least favourite one out of the bunch, but it got a lot of um, good feedback, which is good. A lot of people asking for more of it. Um, I think it really masked it well that I'm actually just in a room on my own. And uh, it was probably one of the toughest because it was the longest um, interaction between two characters that I played, where they had to go back and forth. So it was saying lines, leaving the pause, reacting. <laughs> I sound like I'm a real actor, don't I? With the whole COVID going on, it kind of forced my hand, but I think it worked in the better um, that I played all the characters. And then that, because th my original plan was to hire people to act in it, um, because actors are always better than my capabilities of being an actor. But then after I, s I realized I wouldn't be able to get actors, I had to fill all the roles. I just thought, how funny could I do it by filling all the roles by do as in as the director the writer the actor um but then right i'll do the music i'll do all the sounds just by humming them and making the sound effects myself and i think it worked out better in the end internet sensation fabric That was, an ex actually came up with that idea for a TV show that um, if anyone from RTE is looking, you could definitely buy that from me for a nominal fee. This one was a bit of a challenge. Uh, or the challenge that I think I overcame in this one is that um, the idea to use the school was so then I could show time without actually physically having to put anything with time on it. So now you know with the school bell going off, it's midweek and it's in the morning. And I didn't actually pee on the school. I had a bottle of Fanta in my hand with a hole in the top and fill it with water. The power of television again. I made that sound effect. I was pretty happy with that. And we pause it right there, see, there's absolutely nothing on show. Oh, I'll go back. And, oh, that thud. That thud was a reverse shot, so I started with my head on the ground and jumped back as quickly as I could. And the noise was um, a basketball, like a deflated basketball, slapping it on the ground. I, I have no words for this one. But, again, a lot of people's favourite one. The blood was uh, a concoction I found online and um, red food dye, golden syrup and chocolate powder. Chocolate powder is the thing that really makes a difference and really darkens the blood if you're trying to make a homemade blood. Chocolate powder. Straya. Southern Hemisphere, so they're upside down. Guess no one got that. BPB, shout out. Oh yeah, and this was to keep a continuity that you could go back to some of the television stations and the uh, same programs are still happening there. I came up with this idea at, when I was at a girl's house and she was watching first dates and I just thought how 
outrageous would it be if that's what it said at the end and then because this took about a year in total to make it um gave the sketches time to kind of grow a little in between rather just shooting them editing them putting them up quickly i just thought it'd work well that if we went from this straight into another program and then that was the theme of the next one Bounty the Dog Hunter was overheard on the green bus by some lads that were from Newbridge. So thank you. That was probably, I think about 2012, looking back, was when I heard that. So that's eight years that sketch has been in my head. Rent free. Yeah, important part that I actually left out of this was that um, this idea was conceived because the way to make ketamine is they call it cooking ket. So then I thought, have a cooking show where to cook ket. And then it really just grew legs and evolved from there. So Conso actually did tell me about this one. He said he was out painting one day and it started to rain and he just thought, isn't it lucky that we're waterproof? And I laughed at him and he said, but no, if you really think about it, it really is. And I just thought that would really suit some kind of fascist TV station where they have to tell people that's what they're thankful for. Of fascism in this. We've all been there the morning after the night before. Tiger Briody was uh, in college. We were playing What's Your Porn Star name, and uh, where you take your first pet and your mother's maiden name, and then that's your porn star name. And one of the girls was Tiger Briody, and that sounds like an actual porn star. Uh, so that's where that name came from. This one is very. Very, it's well. It's been an idea that I've had for a long time. When I was shooting a music video in New York, um, it was like they were recording the single, and one of the guys, one of the entourage, was like, "Oh, can I jump on?" And it was like back and vocals, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah." And he went into the sound booth, and he had the headphones on, and no one could hear the song, only him. But we could hear him, and he was just 
blurting out all these sounds. So I found it hilarious, but everyone else was like, yeah, really into it. And uh, I went to work the next day and I was telling Maddie about it and he's like, hip hop hype man. That's what I do. And then he starts blurting out all these sounds. So my original idea for this was to have a, a dinner party, but then when this kind of evolved into reality TV shows, um, come dine with me just came to me. Like I couldn't have had a dinner party or a dinner party just with uh, COVID restrictions. So I really forced my hand, but in a good way. Also, what I'm wearing that's a don't flop T-shirt because when I wear for don't flop. And I got that flannel in New York or a uh, filming a graffiti thing on a rooftop. So it's all legit. The dog chain is a dog chain though. And is this a gun reel? No, it's not. No. <laughs> that was from a, a BMMY. Be smooth. That uh, I used to wear for it as a fella just kept shouting. Keep swimming. <laughs> and then, yeah, that'd be the payoff that everyone thinks is brilliant after it was just completely wacky. This is my housemate in New York just used Yeah, I used to sing these songs, I just thought they were just had to make it. I wasn't sure how to end it, so when I was going through all the footage, I had all these just fun little bits and pieces that had didn't have much relevance. So I thought, yeah, that'd be a great way to cap it all off. Because, yeah, I couldn't think of another way. I was going to maybe cut back to the guy waking up. Anyway, this shot is from, it's Kitty's, Kitty's homage to uh, Boy. Check out Mommy and as Michael Jackson does moves. He did them at the Emmys. She's not really that bad at moonwalk. And I also wanted to show that most of it was just me on my own with a camera and a bed sheet. So you can do it too. That's Kitty's just signature pose. Anytime there's a camera kind of pose there. So it took me a few attempts to get the paper form just right. And then that's my daddy. Kitty was hungover for most of these. As I got on, I found that I improved as uh, as an actor, definitely. That's me trying to make myself fall over. You can't make yourself fall over, has Kitty. Let me know. And my two favourite things are messing with Kitty and annoying Kitty. And they kind of battle for number one spot continually. And I get a ride over so easily. <laughs> I want to clarify that the sausage earlier was a vegan sausage and the milk from the coconuts was a protein milk. Vegan pea milk, maybe? I only realised that uh, very late on that that was actually Maggie. So it was great, the whole family in the show. Everyone's staring.
That was when neighbors going past the front. And then a homage to one of the greatest movies ever. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Which had a lasting effect on Keith. So if you enjoyed Lulu's Variety Show, um, there's a new series coming soon. I have probably about two thirds of the sketches shot. I haven't started editing. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to vlog the process of making that. Um, and thanks for coming. Give us a like. Leave a comment down below what you thought of this. If you have any other questions about the production, process please comment down below and uh, i'll try and or and i'll get around to them um and as always thanks for coming